Hey, fellas, 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 I have a treat for you today. A treat indeed. Linking some stuff together from uh, my other videos. You know how I'm always talking about the great horseshoe bend of the Ohio River and how it's at the center of the Ohio? Well, we are on. And here is the Vincennes Trail, known as the Governor's Trace. I'm going to make a right right here real quick. I'm going to show you the Great Blue River. And what the deal is with this place is where the Buffalo Trace, the Buffalo Indian Trace Road, you know, where Daniel Boone came up and through Kentucky on the Wilderness Road and they stopped there at Louisville at the Falls of the Ohio. Well, that is an east west route once it gets into Indiana. It's like an east west with a, a north a northwest a little bit. Well, this particular spot we're at is where the great horseshoe bend in the ohio is where they go north the indian road goes north by north east a little bit because they're on the way to michigan to get that copper remember that you know all that copper they got yeah oh this here is we're witness we're going to witness the true crossroads of indiana the crossroads state this here is the blue, the great blue river. We're not gonna go very far down the road and I'm gonna turn around and I'm gonna really show you the real tree. It sucks, you guys couldn't see much. Hang on. The great blue river. The great blue river. Just joking. That is a feeder stream feeding into the great blue river. That was a uh, comical relief intermission until we uh, get there, and we'll look. I'll show you something interesting, and then I'll uh, give you some details and some information. Hopefully, I remember it right. Now, this is the Great Blue River. After it split into three. I think this is the center fork or the east fork or they call it the middle east fork or something like that it's confusing but there's three forks of the blue before it gets up to the, uh, the giant uh, lakes and dams where they blocked it off to spread the water out because it was such it was really the great blue river it was the size of the Ohio and, um, all right. and um, when we come in this little town, when we came up through here earlier, one of these places, uh, these places are supposed to be pretty damn original as far as this town. It, this town in like 1830 or so uh, actually was going for the county seat. Uh, and we are in Washington County, Indiana. Yeah, this town was... Uh, fighting for the uh, the county seat and all it is is this four way out in the middle of nowhere it's 20 miles to nowhere Ooh. grist mill and a beautiful old house and, uh, I said that house there is probably cabin. And, um, oh, there's a sign there, a placard. And I'm gonna get parked before we get down there. I gotta go take a little trip by myself here. You guys don't get to go. You gotta stay outside. 
on a note in the outhouse they actually have we're out here 30 miles from nowhere in any direction and they actually have napkins or paper towels in the bathroom unlike mcdonald's jesus christ i'm gonna walk up here and look at this plaque real quick it's an ancient foundation Barn ring, fire ring, hitching post. I thought I was talking about the Almond Brothers there for a minute. Or is that the whipping post? Yeah, big, big stone. Yeah. Rock wall. All right, I'm gonna get up here and look at this plaque. All right, we're here at Beck's Mill. This here's the plaque that you see when you come into town. Well, after you come through town, come down here to the mill. We got an Indian mound. The Indians buried here were probably members of the Delaware tribe. The largest Indian town in Washington County was located at Beck's Spring. Beck's Spring. You know, that is where Beck's Mill is located. Right there. I'm gonna back up here. <clears throat> I don't know where the actual mound itself is. And this rock wall here. If that's the case, it looks like the mound is on that side of the wall. And that's why they cut, they built the retaining wall up to hold the mound in right here. I guarantee it. Let me check out the stonework. Either that or someone built their house on top. Yeah, there's steps. Man, it looks like a good place to no, take. And uh, I was noticed, I was reading an article on this. Um, texture like this they actually have a mason's mark that they put on i thought i was in a face there for a second fellas crazy me crazy me all right i gotta get down here and pay the lady it's only five bucks to keep it afloat and uh This guy right here, Major George Beck, named the Blue River. George Beck, with his wife Betsy and seven children, migrated from the, from NC, North Carolina, to this place and built the first mill on this site in 1808. They were among the first settlers in this part of the Indiana Territory, which is north of the... Um, the Buffalo Trace. It's, they'd already, well, uh, in this part of the Indian Territory. George was a Revolutionary War soldier and later a major in the Harrison County Militia during the War of 1812. He was present at the Battle of Tip Canoe in 1811. Uh, as a, um, when you enlist in the Revolutionary War, uh, depending on your rank, you get property allotted to you and that's how your first uh, colonial pioneers that came out here got their property the first mill was 15 by 15 built of stone logs it was replaced in the 1820s by a large frame it was like a 30 by 30 which was destroyed by fire in 1863 during the civil war it might have been Heinz raid the present mill or the uh, Morgan's raiders at the, after the Battle of Corden, the present mill was built by George Beck Jr. and his son David, and it opened in 1864. George died in 1847, and Betsy died the same year. Both are laid to rest in the Beck Cemetery. And I believe uh, the uh, Becks still own and operate this. They uh, commission it to um, the ladies or whatever. Uh, ladies auxiliary type thing 
and I believe it was a um, a uh, turbine style mill. See, the water comes down the big flume. It's a it's a dual purpose. See, the the one line feeds the big one, the big wheel. I'm assuming, but down here on the left, see that little box there? That water comes down there and spins that propeller, and that shaft goes up and spins in that box and that might actually go to gear gear ratio and actually turn the wheel over there to power the uh the grist mill and the sawmill if i remember right i think it actually had three they did some kind of something with cotton uh carding they called it carding uh where it cleaned the cotton kind of deal and um and he named it blue river thinking this was the start of the Blue River, but I, there's a cave on the property. It goes back a mile, but I'm pretty sure I'm gonna have to ask because I couldn't find it no more. I had it in an old book, you know, that I had that I've loaned out and never got back. Uh, there was a commercial cave here that competed with Wyandotte Cave and Marengo Cave. Well, I think it competed with Wyandotte Cave, and it closed. Well, I guess it would have competed with Marengo Cave. It closed in. Um, early 1900s well we'll check it out it's gonna be a long video right. almost reminds you of my house even look at these rocks I got these same rocks at my house in my yard It's a, a millstone, and I believe there's two. There's one on top and one on bottom, and they're, the stones are actually called burr stones. So it looks like the uh, little box that was in the front, on well, one side, comes over to here and drives this shaft, which in turn turns this this one here. Looks like that a generator. That's a DC DC motor generator. All right, I came on upstairs. Yeah. Yeah. Indians in Jackson County, Wyandotte, Kickapoo, Potawatomi's, Ottawa's, and I guess the Winnebago's. And um, that's like a Wyandotte flint there, probably. For sure. That blue there. And one of their signature styles is to always leave some of the cortex on the bottom here, usually it's white. I assume those are game game balls.
as a drill, a shaft drill. I don't know if you've seen it or not. But that right there's a drill. That one there probably was too. As well as this one. These are like, uh, it's like a core. That one there's like a core also, a blank. Let me have some, in here funky. That's probably a drill. It started out as a big stone and they kept sharpening it and sharpening it and then they made a drill out of it. broke and it's a machine made bottle seem to go way up and look at these mini coca colas what's that bottle there it's a thing I think can't make out the name on that phone. It looks like an E H or P P H E P H I N Q. <laughs> I'm not really sure. Uh, established. Looks like it says established 1863. Oh, if you know anything about that one, Mississippi, it'd be nice to know. I don't know if I can. Almost look like Ewing. Wooden tomahawks. Wooden shoe keychains. wooden flask. Well, let's check out this book. Water power equipment. Kind of like a miter box or something. I don't know. It's probably something from the upstairs they did. Um, these cool things. They spun their cotton into yarn and not for sure what they called that one um, I will show you though All right. down that hole you can't really see, down that hole you can't really see it comes up through the big wheel powers this line drive on that flat belt across the shaft this is for wool cleaning it goes across the line shaft way up there and then that's your PTO power your main power and then it Yeah, this is a dual function or it runs in reverse. You see that one, it comes from over there, it comes to here. This is your counter shaft. And then counter shaft comes to that one, which is off right now. 
and that turns this one over back there and then it from up there comes down here over to this box here the smut machine made in Chambersburg that's not too far away <clears throat> oh this is for the this machine here is for the wheat and the, the stuff these are a, an elevator comes up from the bottom you load it in a hopper load it in a hopper and it comes up here and this thing goes through and cleans it and sorts it your wheat barley grain kind of classifies it out and it drops back down the hole and rides an elevator back down uh, <clears throat> I don't think the big one is actually connected to the smut machine these runners these boards coming up these are the elevator and I'm trying to yeah, it looks like it does come through here. It goes through. Oh, that might be dust. Dust collection. Can go out the sign. Yeah, see that? The big machine in the back is powered by the flat the flat chain out of the floor, but I don't see the power unit itself. Hope I'm not boring you. I don't see a power unit for it. But there's the big belt drives on the side, so you just slip the belt over or on this one. Run that big flat belt over there and run these. I'm trying to see how the big machine is powered. I didn't see it. Not for sure what he's got going on over there. Looks like a churn, a hand crank churn on the bottom. There's a manufacturer of McCaffrey, Kalamazoo, Michigan. That's a big old hornet's nest. And, uh, got some barrels up there, drums. I don't know. There's actually another story. The mechanics of that stuff is crazy. It looks like that might be how he turns it in reverse. Flip the belt over. I think that's where they get the vat or the bat, and that's the the long wool it's real long to make the quilts it runs through this roller mechanism and they're real long spaghetti noodle style wool and then the other ones are for yarn are these uh, squirrel tails pretty cool Real cool. And uh, I guess they, uh, I don't know what you call them. Uh, it's called the quilt machine, but I don't think it's that. It's a uh, make woven textile. Uh, Alright, I'm gonna go back downstairs and meet the miller. This is a small, the small turbine. It's a um, horizontal instead of a vertical. You know, if it was vertical, it'd be long, long fins instead of short. 
when it says it's a, a Leffel Samson turbine. 23 inch top crown, 33 inch outside diameter with a, a head of 20 feet. So your head would be 20 feet. So that means you can push 20 feet. Max RPM would be 268, 30 horsepower. Your kilowatts is 22.3 kilowatt hours, I believe. Flow 15 three quarter cubic feet a second at 10. I don't know what an MGD is. Miller Genuine Drag, 10 Miller Genuine Drag. Max gallon duty or uh, mega maybe max gallon old orange crush sign oh look at the uh, the geodes. So nice. Remember, there's an Indian mound here, too. And it's actually steps cut in the rock. It's actually steps to get up there. Look at that. Is that Druzy Quartz or Citrine? Or just or just smoky quartz? Vex yeah. Mill found eight hundred George Vex Senior. Michael Paul Vander Vanderboot, Chapter Colonial Dane. Or Jane Bacon. Definitely a temperature difference. That looks like a cave there. Right there. And over in there. Get it all. Behind the dam is what loads the feeder, the feeder tube. See it down there? Trace your head pressure. I like I can't really see that stuff. Well, the big pipe goes down, and then it backs up. See, it can't. It creates a pressure, so it goes down. And it stops, and it has to keep it going. It has to force it up that tube to spin that wheel, and then spin the little turbine at the bottom. I still don't know what that MGD was, uh, Miller Genuine Draft all that thing, but it has to be a uh, Max Gross, you know, uh, duty. Oh, I keep thinking duty for duty cycle, but um, yeah, three stories. All right, all trails 
are on the property when they lock the gate you're locked in and um, they close in like 25 minutes uh, oh, there's a short trail shows this updated cabin here it looked like I'm gonna try to walk it and I've already cut this video into 20 pieces Alright, I don't figure out where I'm at. It said blazed, but I didn't see it. Alright, park over there, walk through the mill, jumped on it. And rebuilt hand structure and bed with geo. Two cemetery trail. Hands crashed. So if I come out of the mill, the little map is confusing. I'm just gonna go for it. If I get locked in, I'll have to hop the gate or swim the river. It's actually, that's called Mill Creek right there, and it feeds into Blue River down that bridge we crossed. All right. Now I know why Moses had a walking stick. Spider webs. No doubt. I wanted to give me one. They did have a vantage point here. <laughs> There's where they dammed the spring up, made her header box, to feed the fountain. Maybe you'll see a little better over there. I'll show you where the load loads up. Damn frog. You see, and it goes down to the pressure box down there, footer box. Actually, he said, or that woman told me, that they had a sawmill over on that side also. So it was probably run where that water spraying out right there. It probably had a, a shaft that run off of that. That's another turbine. Because that's a different turbine than the other one. The other turbine is underneath that uh, lean-to on the side of the building there, or whatever you call it. Yeah. Let me clean off the roof. It's all volunteer work. Volunteer work. Um, nobody gets paid for this. I might have to check into it, other than it's 30 miles here and 30 miles back, but it's on for four hours. Um, yes. And then. Cool rocks. I'm looking for bones sticking out or something. I don't know, I'm looking for a cemetery. It's an early 1800 cemetery, I believe. Well, I got time. No galley lagging. Well, their map is confusing, and I think I'm already on the wrong trail. I think it's the old quarry site. There's a little washout here. We're jumping off the trail a little bit. I'm going to show you this. I think it's the old quarry it said. The actual grinding stones are from France. They're called France Burr. Or from Europe. I don't know if this is quarried out or not. Oh, man. All right. Yeah, it's a big smooth wash stone right there. Wash your laundry on that. And fellas, I ain't gonna make it a bird cemetery. It's way up there. Look like they're having a funeral session. Maybe wrong. Some kind of equipment up there running though. People, uh, workers talking back and forth. And it's way up on the hill, and I only got like 10 minutes before they close. These people are volunteers, so I ain't gonna make them stay late or nothing like that. They probably get the hell out of here. I mean. It's only four hours, but I mean, that's four hours of the time they volunteered. I may have to come up here another day, volunteer, and I'll walk all these trails. There was like five of them. And um, they were like 0.3 miles, and I think the longest one was uh, 1 1.8, I think. And, uh, yeah, we'll find. 
I find all of his stuff. And I might even volunteer my time to remark his damn trails. Become a cartographer. Like a map. Anyway, I hope you guys may enjoy this. I'm going to have to put it together. It's in like 10 pieces. <sighs> yep. Oh man, look at that. That's a big piece of coral. That's not a geo, that's coral. That is coral. Look at that one. That's coral. Yeah, that's a geo. Oh yeah, here's another, look at this coral. Focus, focus. Yeah. And they did a, uh, I guess traditional dovetail, dovetail style uh, overlap on the logs. Mm. Nice chimney. It's a full two stories. Kind of overdid it, but uh, the, I think he was uh, the mill keeper was actually kind of wealthy because everybody had come do business here. I don't know if it's the original location or not, though. Well, I'm taking trail less less travel. Oh, look at the uh, there's a flower garden right here. Oh man, yeah, this is a nicer geode here. You have the flower garden. You know, there's no rattlesnakes. I ain't got my snake boots on. Oh, yeah. There's some stuff over there. Yeah. I think I gotta go around the trail to get over there. Oh, look at this conglomerate. Yeah, I ain't be sure about that one. It's built on a Native American burial ground, and them dudes love their rocks. You know, it wasn't a job to them to make an arrowhead. It was a passion, a survival, but then it became a passion. A labor of love. There's a, there's a little fountain here. Flower bed. Get down here and blow it. Oh man, a petrified tree. Yeah, I think it's a, more like a raised flower bed, possibly. Let's check this one out. Isn't here, right here. That's a petrified tree, I think. I think. Oh man, look at this. Look at this. You guys are probably down there waiting on me. Pull that shit off. Throw it back in the back. The rock's more important. You guys are probably getting sick. Just a few more here and then I gotta go. Out of time, fellas. I sat there and wanted to talk too much. Now, check out this structure right here. Oh, there's another, like, like a flower pot. And look at that, dude. That, that girl couldn't figure out what she had in her museum. That was in her museum. That was in her museum. So I said, Rocks and fossils, uh, fossils and min minerals of fossils. That was not. Man, I don't know what kind of bush that is. Looks wet. That thing smells funky. It's definitely, um, what's that, uh, Sasquatch that stinks? That's what I picture him. Stench. It's a stench. Oh man, look. 
Put this in here. This is some, I'm some guy. I'm not sure what that is. Oh yeah, look at that llama. Oh man, look at that. Uh, it's a pink quartzite. Pink quartz right there. I don't know if you can see the color on that or not. Pink quartz. Made out of round river rock. Now look at the the roof support was that pole I guess. And then look at this shame right here. Yeah. Oh my gosh, man, there's so many fossils in this thing. It's unreal. Unreal. Look over here at this one here. Can you see the one I'm looking at? Do you see the one I'm looking at? I mean, I could be looking at that tree on the bottom left, or the dude's head in the center, or the like tree up there, or the stalactite to the left. And that could be part of the woolly mammoth tooth. Like, like a baby woolly mammoth tooth right there, possibly. Probably not, though. Alright, time to go. I gotta get out of here, fellas. I should know all the gag. Nice bridge. It's all round river rock. It's old. I don't know what kind of bush that is. It smells funky. Funky, funky. Oh, man. Can't help it, man. Look at these fossils. I mean, look at these fossils. I'm not for sure what that one is. I guess it's... And that one there is a, a big sponge. That one there is a sponge. This one here must be a coral, like a coral reef. It's like the big boy. I just find little fragments of stuff like that.